So I need this. Are we live? Oh, oh okay. Hello. That tastes good. It's proper, proper brandy, that is. So, hi, hello, welcome along. This is Nick again. This is Rotors, the RC Helicopter Show. Very warm welcome to you. It's nine o'clock. It's the 15th of July. Oh, 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 oh. That tastes good. It's 15th of July, 2014. This is show six. Guy, can you believe it's gone so quick? Bye, blimey. Anyway, it's the middle of the silly season, so we like to say. Uh, lots of events come and gone. Lots of events kind of coming up. But uh, last, just to recap kind of on the last shows, we had uh, Amy, uh, um, sorry, we should have had uh, Matt Botos on this show. But before that, we had uh, Adrian doing the uh, quick bite size with Burt Camera. That was really quite interesting. But I think we need a bit more time to talk about the you know, the, the wide subject of, of servos. So we'll take that on board and, and, and readjust the bite size, perhaps, for later on. Uh, the previous show to that, of course, we had the guys from line. We had uh, uh, Jamie Robertson, and we had uh, Ben Storick, uh, sorry, Jamie Robertson, Connor Sloan, and Jeff Fassbine. It was really great to have those guys on the show, and if you're watching, thank you very much indeed for your time, guys. We had a great time recently at... Uh, at Helimasters, the World Championship 2014 in uh, in Venlo in the Netherlands, only a, a week or so ago. So we're going to be talking a lot about that. We've also got uh, a bit of a chat, chit chat tonight, obviously because we're kind of let down a little bit by Matt Botas, and I'm not kind of afraid to say that um, he was a bit of a letdown. So um, yeah, I'll have to talk with Matt when we get to see Minerva. However. It is what it is. We are where we are. So what we're going to basically do, we're just going to have a chat. It was a bit too late in the day. It was unfair on uh, any of the other guests who have expressed interest uh, coming on the show. It's a bit unfair for us to kind of drag them in, uh, lastminute.com. So uh, we need to give our future guests the, the opportunity to promote them and, and, and obviously advertise their their um, you know their involvement in the show. So we're just going to have a quick chat with, uh, with us three. We've got uh, my usual cohorts. We've got Adrian Law. Adrian Chapman Law. I don't know which one you want to be called these days. I'm not sure. And um, we've got Kev Davis. Uh, Kev Davis is on the show. So let's bring those guys in. Let's have a look, word with uh, uh, Kev and Aid. Are you there? Let's start with Aid first. Hello, Aid. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty busy at the moment. <laughs> a lot going on with uh, with work and the shows and family and so on and so forth. But uh, so you uh, you were responsible for bringing uh, well. The, the, uh, Matt Bosos on the show, and you couldn't even do that, could you? Well, I tried with bloody hard. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, like... <laughs> now you know how hard it is to get these to get these guests on. Well, the show. It, it's kind of a bit difficult when they when you email them on the Friday and say, "How's things going? Are you ready?" Right. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I needed one of those as well, <laughs> and uh, and they say, I, I, oh, "I've earned it." I live in the middle of nowhere in Alabama, and I have very little internet connection and no webcam. Great. So that kind of put an nail in that coffin. Thanks so for letting us know, Matt. Yeah, great. And uh, so yeah, I mean, I've, it's it's I've been a bit busy this end as well. It's been a bit nuts. Just not it just works. Just being mental. So I haven't even managed to do much flying, but I have been playing with a little mini Protoss. Which is uh, which, which are quite neat little things. Although it, it's got a V bar, it's not mine. It's got a V bar on it, and this whole plugging it into a computer thing—it's really annoying. I hate it. It's just like, I don't have a laptop. I have a desktop. I have mobile devices to do other things. Right. So actually, plugging a helicopter into my computer is a bit of a pain because you can't—you know—you can't move it around and stuff. It's it's just annoying. Sounds like you. Uh, sounds like you may need a Spartan Vortex V3. Well, that's what I've tried to get him to get, but he's got a he's got a V bar on his other model, so he's like, I don't want to learn to do anything else. So I was like, well, I'm going to be the one that's setting it up anyway, so just get a vortex. <laughs> I would I would I would say get a Bavarian Demon. I mean, the the Bavarian Demon 3SX, 
you know, I, from a personal point of view, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I think the system's absolutely awesome. In fact, I'm doing a review at the moment, and I'm sorry, guys, Midland Helicopters, uh, Noel Cross, and uh, and Joe from Bavarian Demon. I've been I've been promising that I've finished this uh, review off for a, for a, for a few months, uh, and and I simply just haven't found enough time to complete it. But it's almost done, so uh, that'll be in uh, uh, Ready Controlled Rotor World uh, in the next couple of months. So uh, yeah, Bavarian Demon, really, really great bit of kit, but you need a laptop. But I believe they're working on some sort of handheld device you can just plug and play. So, uh, so that was I, think, good. Um, I think you were you you were playing with that just off just before the first show. I think it was. I think I, you were in the process of building the model, I think. Yeah, yeah. Which, I, was, I was building my fantastic. I mean, I love it. My uh, KDS Agile seven point two, and, and I was building the five point five as well. And I think. You know, out of all the models that I've owned over the years, it, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this is some sort of sales pitch. Um, it, you know, the, all the models, all the RC helicopters I've, I've owned over the years, it's for me, it's it's the it's the nice, it was the nicest to build, and it flies fantastic. Okay, it's a little bit heavier than this, you know, sort of normal model, but you know, I'm no real hard 3D aid, so it's not it's it's great for me, and it performs fantastically. Uh, I just I just love it. So yeah, it's taken me a while to kind of juggle in between and. And it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person to take me time. Anyway, let's have a quick chat with uh, with Kevin. Kev, are you there? I'm here, Nick. I'm, how are you? Good. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. Yeah, I'm a bit, a bit, surprised, a bit, a bit surprised at the amount, of, uh, uh, the amount of traffic we've been getting at the moment, which is great, you know, great news that the show's, you know, kind of building up ahead of steam. And, and I'm happy to say, you know, people kind of like the show, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, because we're a bunch of bloody three idiots, but uh, at the end of the day, it seems to work somehow. But um, I do get a lot of people sort of coming up to me saying they, um, you know, they, they like listening to the show, and obviously we've got nothing else better to do, so they're just sitting and listening to us three rabble on to, uh, to these superstar pilots, whoever they are. But uh, Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, we're all, all sat here, starstruck, so all these superstars are on, and uh, we're just waffling away. But uh, it's actually good fun to do the show, though, isn't it? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I just really enjoy it. It's just so much fun. I mean, it's hard work in the background. I mean, a lot of people don't see what we do in the background, uh, how hard it is. And as as we've kind of alluded to in Matt, getting the guests on is like herding cats. But it's it's hard work, but it's all good fun. Sorry, it's all for good cause. It's all, good, all for good cause. It's all, put, all to promote the hobby. That's, yes. that's what we're doing it for. So let me, let me just let me just turn my phone down, which is what we it's just a bit of a schoolboy error. We should have done that before the show. Um that's uh saying on sorry, excuse me, my phone's just going crazy. Uh, completely unprofessional. <sighs> I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but oh yeah, Mark Troutman. He's just p- pinging me loads of Mark Troutman, the owner of Spinblade, just give me loads of messages. Yeah, that was you pinging on the show, Mark Troutman. Thank you very much. I've turned you down. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should all get a free set of blades for that. What do you reckon? No. Definitely. Yeah, no. Send, send us some blades, Mark, for annoying us. You haven't earned it. You haven't earned it. So, <laughs> but so, no, yeah, I mean, um, as I said, I'm just so busy with work. I mean, my <laughs> my work seasonal anyway, just because I'm in like the horticultural trade. So everything grows in summer. So everyone's machines are breaking in summer, and I'm just. I've got that much work. It's coming in quicker than I can do it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm still getting time to fly. Um, the Goblin 570A that I got for the review, that is getting its arse well and truly um, rattled about the field every weekend. I must be on about 70 flights now. It's performed faultless. I think everyone at the club's flown it, and they all, they all love it. It's Cracking little thing. I've just, got to, I've just got to butt in and say, Mark Trackman, stop sending me messages. <laughs> stop, stop sending me messages. Yes, I know you're there. I know you're watching. I bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> the Germans for you. Know, they, they, they win a World Cup and they, ne- and they never uh, shut up, do they? Uh, exactly. They, think they, they own the planet. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, sorry, no, I'm going to have a fag. We're just chilling out. We're, not, we're having yeah, a fag. Exactly. Yeah, so chill out. But yeah, no, the 570 is getting uh, used and abused as it should do. Um, I've turned my 630 into a night flyer now, just for some something to do. I've always wanted to try a night flying, never really uh, got around to it or could afford it. So just... I bought myself a set of blades once. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm a 450. 
<laughs> it may, me being so impatient as I usually am when I get something new, I took it out. So I put it all. It's it charged all the batteries, char, charged the blades, uh, and took it outside uh, and spun it up probably th uh, three revolutions. It crashed into the. Uh, it crashed into the floor, <laughs> destroyed the blades, and that was it done. <laughs> I personally used to love night flying, especially at Marcus, because it was just you get the crowd behind you, and it was just an awesome laugh. But I mean, I don't know what the night blades are like these days. But the night blades back then, the MS cockpit ones, they were absolutely awful, rubbish, horrible, grabby, really light. Just I mean, you know, back in the day, the fly bars. So it just, they were just horrible blades to fly. But they made a good fart, so that you could really get. Yeah, they, they were really, really farty. Excuse me. Did you, you just say they make you fart? No, oh, they fart. Come on, uh, grow up. Uh, <laughs> grow, grow, grown ups, grown, grown olds inevitable, mate. Grown ups optional. Exactly, exactly. In the middle of a full mid midlife crisis, taking it after having just turned forty. Shut up, fool. <laughs> Mark Trapman sent me. Mark Trapman sent me another one. He's laughing off his settee. <laughs> All right, okay. What What are you doing on your set? Yeah. Oh, you. He's he's been filthy now. I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> So, so what, what night blades did you use then, Aid? Did you say was it MS Composite? The MS Composite ones, because that's pretty much all that was available back then. All oh, right. Yeah, right. I'm gonna say uh, one thing I have noticed is like over in the UK, there's a distinct shortage of night flying components. There really is. I mean, Edge they don't make Edge anymore, so they're like unicorns. Um, they don't make Edge anymore. Are you sure? No. Uh, well, from what I was told. <laughs> Go on, what do you know, Nick? What do you know? Talking oh, about okay. <laughs> all the time, brother. Um, all the time. What, what, I, what? Just what's on the subject of uh, of blades and stuff? Um, you know, have you heard of cock blades? Well, they're called night magic blades now, and they're magic night blades. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the the night flying has come on tremendously over the last sort of few years, and it was the actual night flying at three D three D masters, which kind of got me into this whole sort of commentating stuff, really. Um, and I've loved it ever since. I mean, the, the night flying Orlando Heli blowout was just mm -hmm. sensational. It was awesome. But uh, you know about the um, Western Park in the Dark? Remember, it was supposed to have been in March. Uh, we'll had a phone call from, uh, from, from Steve Bishop, the organizer, and uh, it's all a go for the 25th and the 26th of October. Western Park, so that'd be really cool because that's the first ever, um, as far as I'm aware, you know, the first ever international, a uh, uh, European, uh, solely sort of night flying event for helis and planes. So it's going to be really cool, guys. You've got to come down to that Western Park. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, like you're saying, then the night magic blades, the, the ones that actually draw the pictures in the sky, they're like the the no, well, they were the pinnacle of night blades. But they've got something new new in the pipeline. Cause I, I did actually try to buy a set of the Night Magic Blades, but they no longer make the red and green ones because they're doing, right. they're doing full colour ones. <laughs> so when they come out, they're probably going to be about a £1,000 <laughs> per pair, but no, I think they'll be well worth it. And if, if you've never seen Night Magic Blades, just have a look on YouTube, put in Night Magic Blades and have a look. They're just fantastic. They, they are really awesome bits of kit. Oh, for sure. I mean, they are, they are, I say they are pretty expensive, but at the end of the day, it's it's all about the it's all about uh, Howard Tan sending me messages. Go away, Howard. I'm trying to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning Facebook off. Go away, everybody. Nick. Okay. We've, yes. we've we've got a couple of questions. Firstly, from Daniel, uh, who says, "Stop smoking, kids watching." No. <laughs> and then we're also being accused of being our RC Heli Nation this evening. I'm no, sorry. We're, we're being accused of being RC Heli Nation. And with that, how many flights did you do this week? Hell, man. Did Me? Uh, about ten. Uh, two halves. <laughs> two halves. <laughs> two halves. <laughs> and Nick, Nick, do you get the no fly? <laughs> no. <clears throat> Blue. I haven't. I haven't actually. I haven't flown for a, for a few weeks now. Um, oh, right. So yeah, I, I, but I've got. I've, I've actually redone all my garage out, my man cave. You know when it kind of gets to that stage. 
Sorry, my dog's going bananas. You know, it actually gets to that stage where you you realise you you got for like five or six years of just like uh, just hoarding stuff, and your garage is sort of overflowing. My man cave, and I thought, said to I said to uh, the bread knife, I said I've got to I've got I've got to completely gut this now. And I spent about six hours and about ten bin liners trying to you know clearing all this stuff out. So now it's nice and smart and new and. And I've got a load of new stuff coming. Apparently, my uh, I'm getting some stuff brought over um, from my father actually for a job lot of helicopters and planes. I don't know what's in it, but I know it's a lot of stuff. So watch out. There's going to be some stuff for sale. I would imagine. But anyway, yeah, it's all good stuff, isn't it? We love it. We love it. We love it. Love the sport. Love the hobby. Love the people involved. We've got some great shows, of course, coming up uh, over the next few weeks and months. Uh, you guys, you coming down to air this weekend? Yep, we should, I should be there on Sunday, possibly, maybe Saturday evening, not sure yet. How far away is that from you guys? It's only about an hour. What about you, Kev? It's about two and a half, three for me, but I'm going to try and get there on the Saturday night. Um, if Aid's coming Saturday night, I'll be, I'll be bringing the night flyer for Aid to fly. Um, if not, we'll be just coming down on Sunday, sort of thing, because I'm, I'm meeting Aid there, and then we're going down, and we're going to finish off the flight review for the Goblin. So we're going to all tie it all together, sort of thing. But, yeah, okay. def- definitely going to try and get that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Just, um, so, I mean, the, as we were saying before the show, the um, the flight schedule is, or the schedule for the for air is a little bit kind of um, difficult to find, shall we say. Uh, do you, Nick, as you're going to be the commentator there, as that is what you do most of the time, um, do you know anything about what's happening over the weekend? Just the, the timings of stuff. You know, just when things happening. Uh, yeah, we start. We start flying at nine o'clock. Uh, obviously, with the pilot briefing, uh, and then we go through. We're going to be having the pro class, advanced class, sport class. Uh, there is there is the um, uh, the fun flight for the white horse as well, and that's going to be kind of in between. I, I think they're going to. I think they kind of left it a little bit open because the weather forecast is a little bit uncertain at the moment but it's just it's going to go ahead the thing is with air and what's 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 beautiful about um the air, air competition and the format is that it's, it's it's very well structured i mean richie and matt have done a, always do a fantastic job uh, of putting on the event um but it's 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 loose, but not in an unprofessional way. If you understand what I mean, that there's the set, there's the there's, there's the sets. All the all the flights are going to be um, timed. All the flights are you know going to be start at nine o'clock, as I say, and then weather permitting, you know everything else kind of slotted in between. But we'll give everybody a full brief, a full rundown of what exactly is uh, going to be uh, you know sort of in the running order on the morning on the on on Saturday morning. Um, but that's that's kind of the way it's it's going to go. But I mean, I think everybody knows the the sort of format as it sort of stands at the moment. I mean, there's going to be... Um, all, all the flights are obviously to music. So, you know, they, they've got one flight on the, on the Saturday, one flight on the Sunday. I think everybody kind of understands how the marking works. It's, it's, it's simple-ish to a degree. Um, but it's about, it's, about, it's about variety. It's about entertainment, crowd appeal. But, of course, you're going to have the, um, uh, the, the low rider award, the big air award, and all these sort of really, you know, fun things that, that, that air is sort of renowned for. So, yeah, it's going to be a fabulous, a fabulous event. They've got, it's a fantastic site as well at the White Horse. I've not actually been there myself, but everybody tells me it's a really, really good place to fly. And uh, the scenery is uh, outstanding as well. And they've got really good caterers there. There's a beer tent. Um, there's, there's, I think there's a hog roast as well going on in the night time. So they've really kind of pulled out all the stops to put on a, you know, a, on a splendid show. But I think it's just, of course, with everything, like with Helimasters, you know, that you just can't, you can't factor, you know, you can't, you can't engineer out the weather, can you? So it'll all be explained to everybody. It, it's, it's a lot, a lot of it is clear on the website, by the way. If you go to um, air-competition.com, uh, you'll see everything about the sports advance and the pro class in there. Uh, and how the the judges uh, you know score their points and everything. So I think I think everybody pretty much knows how it works. But um, they're basically a hundred marks um, for how how well they fly to music, the technical content, entertainment value, how it flows, how the flight flight flows and stuff like that. So the the the, the judging criteria is quite simple. Um, but yeah, everything everything will go ahead 
you know, as normal on uh, on 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 Saturday morning. But uh, I'm actually at um, a wedding on uh, Friday night, so it's Grant's wedding, Grant and uh, Kaylee. So it'll be a, an early night for me and an early start as well. So I'll be down there at nine o'clock on uh, on Saturday morning. What time are you guys getting there? Uh, if well, I'm working Saturday morning, and I think uh, Kev is as well. Um, yeah. So if I come if I come on Saturday, it won't be till kind of five six o'clock at the earliest. Um, and if I come on Sunday, I'll be there. I'll be there at kind of nine ten ish somewhere around there. Yeah. And um, and Nick B says the forecast is fine. Man up. I, I'm fine. I've got my brolly and I've got my chair. I don't give a monkeys. I'm all good. <laughs> and of course, the great great news as well that um, you know our good pal Duncan and. Uh, uh, and th- you know, thanks to Mark Tram and at Spin at, at uh, Spin Blades and uh, Andy Hinton Lever uh, of Opti Power and Opti Fuel, and of course, you know, Chris uh, Chris Walton and the guys are fast. Like, thanks to them, fellas, for organising uh, Duncan. Duncan, the world champion, is going to come and see us the weekend. Uh, there, that's uh, now been made official, so it's uh, it's all good news. Uh, it'll star-studded event, so to speak, and. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be great. We're going to have a, we're going to have a great we're going to have a great time. And actually, be the first time that uh, you know uh, that that I've actually met Kevin. Oh, second time. I beg your pardon. Yep. <laughs> so um, yeah. so yeah, so yeah, it's it's all going to be. So you you had a good time with Bert then on the uh, on the road to show aid. Was that uh, yeah? Some... The bike size was cool. Um, Bert Bert is a is a brilliant guy to talk to. Uh, is an absolute font of knowledge when it comes to to servos and it was a font of knowledge. Full stop. Um, he's been doing this game a long time, and uh, he's got a lot of experience with playing around with various bits and pieces. And yeah, yeah. And uh, he's he's a really really good bloke. And um, I think we made a mistake of trying to cover too much uh, with with the with the survey bike sites. So the plan is at some point in the future, um, and also because you know, Bert was having a bit of an issue with the internet connection as well. It was yeah. Uh, it's a bit stop starty. So once his uh, his ISP's uh, got his backside into gear and uh, his internet connection is working properly, we're gonna we're gonna give it another go and we'll narrow down the subject a, a little bit and talk in depth about uh, some specific bits and pieces to do with surveys. So mm. that would be, be quite cool. And of course, uh, I think the other thing that uh, is worth noting is that uh, uh, accuracy has been actually released to market. Yes. The Heli Masters. So I know I've been watching the forums and uh, and Google Plus and you know, some of the bits and pieces floating around. And there's uh, there's been a few odd little bit, few little problems here and there, which is to expect with a new product. But uh, generally speaking, shut up, go away. Uh, and you were talking, about, you were selling. Oh, you were complaining about my phone going off. That's the landline. <laughs> um, you take, you can take, you can take the receiver, take the handset off the receiver. No, well, no, you can't because it's a cordless phone. Well, you just have to just pr- unplug it. Press the, press the button so it's, it's. Oh, do I have to explain? <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot you were the tech expert around here. <laughs> yeah, you can't buy class, can you? <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, there's, there's been a few little problems here and there, but nothing too major, and they've been really good at getting on top of it as well. So when people have had a problem, you know, they've been messaging on either Facebook or Google Plus or. Preferably, by the way, guys, if you do have a problem, the best way to get in contact with them is through the Zendesk, uh, which is linked all over the place. Um, I'll put a link in the in the description later on. But uh, the Zendesk is the, is the best way to get your problem sorted quickly. It was good actually to see um, to see to see, uh, to see the guys uh, at, uh, at at Heli Masters. I mean, they they were. Rushed off their feet all weekend. I mean, poor old Ashley. When I spoke to him at the end, he was um, uh, bewilderingly tired. I think he's probably an understatement. Um, I, I actually got him on the flight line on the on the um, on the sofa to to have a chat, uh, an interview with him, and uh, and he was extremely pleased with the reaction. And we had uh, Mitch Morosa uh, flying it. We had all the Bossian brothers, the the Bosso brothers. They're all they're all like clambering to get themselves a copy of this disc, you know. And it was great for you know you you know UK boys, you know UK homegrown. Uh, technology company kind of delivering the goods and 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 delivering over and above expectation of of um, uh, to the market. And I think it's uh, I think it's great they've finally gone to market now. And we, you know from from us here at Road to the RC Helicopter Show guys, you know we wish you all the very very best. And I'm sure it's going 
very well. Now it's now it's actually gone to market. It's in all the shops, and um, I hope you guys out there are enjoying it. Do let us know as well what your thoughts are of accuracy, and uh, you know what your uh, what your comments are, and and if you if you agree with all the. Uh, the, the hype that we kind of uh, we, we supplied you guys with over the last couple of months or whatever, we hope we haven't uh, undersold it. We know we kind of felt that way ourselves, and that's why we said what we said. And we hope you agree. So, guys, have you 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 you've using the final version now? I think we're on to beta beta five, or is it six no, now? I think beta. No, it's well out of beta. It's um, no, um, no, 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 no. We're on the final production now. RTM, but... RTM three, something like that. So there's been a couple of little updates since release just to smooth out any problems that were ever happening. But uh, Margin Deco has got a question on the uh, Q&A that really kind of sums it up from the, the general feeling behind the simulator. It's accuracy rules with lots of Zs. Uh, greeting from the ne Netherlands. <laughs> got two of the in it. Yes, yeah, so hi, hi, uh, hi to Martin. We've also got another question as well from uh, Daniel Slatnik. How are you doing? Uh, great, great name there. Uh, Duncan's winning flight was awesome with the rain and the water. You're absolutely right. It was, uh, it was an epic weekend. I mean, that's a fact. Um, if you've got any more questions about, uh, about Helibasters whilst we're on, uh, on the show, please do fire it over and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, hi to... Uh, Hi to Tamas Lavani, our good friend at uh, Reinhard. He's going to be entering air competition for the first ever competition. Or should we say, call him um, Tamas Tail Happy Lavardi? Because I think that's pretty much sums Tamas up. He's got a, a, a an oscillating a pyro rate on his tail like I've never seen anybody else do it. So, yeah, it would be good fun to see Tamas fly. And he's a very, very talented pilot as well. So, uh, yeah, good luck to you, mate. Uh, Spartan Nano, the best fly ballast gyro out of the box in 2014. Yes, most definitely. However, Angelos, please get your bum in gear and get the e-governor out. I think I, I think uh, Kev will agree with me here. It's just... Yeah, definitely. I've, I've been chasing a bit of a tail issue with my X5 uh, since the... I mean, and it was all, it's always been there a little bit, but... Um, it was more noticeable with the, the X Nova motor. And mm. uh, I switched the governor off in the speed controller and it disappeared. So, and then when I switched it back on again, it came back again. I was got, it's just this tiny, tiny little shimmy. It's nothing major, nothing really that bad. Mm. This tiny, tiny little shimmy that you only really see it in the hover. It's just annoying. And, um, and it, it's, it's the governor in the speed controller messing it around. So, I'm Angelos, if you are listening, please. Do it now. Sort it out, son. Sort it out. Save us. Save us from this misery. <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> those, those people running Spartans, send Angelos an email or a message on his forum or Facebook, Facebook or, yeah. or whatever. Send him an email and say, Oi, sort it. Sort it, son. Sort it. So yeah, for uh, for just go back to Air very quickly as well. Um, the sponsors for Air, I've got to say a big thanks to them. Uh, Fast Lab Performance, Opti Power, Opti Fuel. We've got Spin Blades, KDS Models U at UK, Horizon Hobbies, Align T Rex, Dakota UK, Midland Helicopters, uh, Spectrum Promotions. Um, yeah, merchandise. I think they are. Uh, we've got these new uh, new blades. Actually, I don't know much about them. Called Zeal Blades. They look quite nice. Um, but uh, we'll see. that they're, they're going to be sponsoring some of the stuff and uh, giving out some blades and stuff. We've also got RC Hero as well. Uh, they're sponsoring air. So we've got loads of loads of really top name, top well, top draw sponsors. Of course, they're all showing lots of support for uh, for the air competition down at the White House. So of course, it is this weekend. So you guys watched the live stream. Did you like it? Did you find it enjoyable? Did you have any problems I, with it? I didn't watch much of it because I was a bit busy. But and <laughs> it's the same problem. Thanks, mate. I, I, I tried. To, I watched a lot. I watched as much as I could, but I, it made it a lot more difficult because they use the live stream website rather than using it YouTube or something like that, something that works on lots and lots of different devices. Because the Android app for live stream does not work very well when I tried it. No, I don't know, yeah. Um, and so you, you kind of you, you you are limited to then using a computer, a proper computer. Yeah. If, you know, if you're out and about somewhere, you can't just like fire it up and have a go. I mean, and and watch and catch bits and pieces of it. It's you just can't. It, I, so you know, it limited how much I can watch it, which is mm. really annoying. 
I, I hate that sort of thing. That limit, when you're limiting what, where you can watch it and how you watch it. You know, you should always try. And that's one of the reasons why we use Hangouts on Air, is because it uses YouTube, and YouTube works on pretty much everything, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not going uh, to start getting all evangelical about Google Plus again, are you? No, he's not. We're not going to let him. No, no, no. no, no. no but no, I, I'll, I'll agree with what Aid was saying. I mean, I, I was also struggling for time to watch on the live stream. I, I have watched it all again because obviously it's all been repeated since and it's, and it's still up there. You can still watch it all. Um, but we were at the field on Sunday and we were trying to watch it on the phones on a Sunday and we were just struggling like hell to get on, on different platforms, on iPhones, on Windows <laughs> phone, on Androids. We were just struggling to get on. We, we, every now and again we got on and we, we could watch it, but it was just a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still the technology the, 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 the technology they've got actually at the site is just incredible. I mean, we've, mm. you know, but obviously it's, it's all about internet connection. It's all about speed. I mean, there's, there's tons, of, tons of people. I mean, I just simply couldn't, you know, in between the flights, I couldn't read out the amount of messages I was getting through. People sending photographs where they're watching it, and it's quite really weird. People taking a photograph of their iPad, watching the screen, watching me, watching the screen. I'm like, what? This is, is quite, <laughs> quite, quite weird. But there was just lo loads of people, um, you know, loads of people watching on devices and iPads and stuff. It wasn't just desktops. Yeah, you have to watch it through the browser. That's the thing. That's mm. the key. And it, it just doesn't, when you, if you're watching it on a, a bigger device, it's not too bad. But if you're trying to watch it on a phone or something, it's just a royal pain in the backside. It's just, mm. you know, it's just not very fun. Yeah, I, I think yeah. a lot of it does stem from actually the, the, the devices themselves, because obviously they're not as, as powerful as a, as a PC, and they're not as powerful as a, the big tablets and stuff. So obviously the, the devices are struggling a bit, but... Yeah, no, it it was watchable at times, but yeah, we can re all appreciate the technology. There's a lot of effort and a lot of time, a lot of money's gone into it, and you can only take your hat off to them for that. And but obviously, it, it, if you just take on these small little niggles that, that they have had, you can improve it for the future and just make it bigger and better. Well, it, it, it's it's a journey, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's, it's oh, starting yeah. off. You know, it's it's only it's relatively in its infancy. I mean, in terms of the technology that they've got on site, you wouldn't think that. But um, you know, in terms of how it's delivered, you know, how it how it gets consumed, it's it's kind of out of their hands, I guess. So it's infrastructure, I think, more than technology, or more than you know the device, the, the technology to drive it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was a simply awesome event. I mean, we had some awesome pilots. I mean, you know, we had some new pilots as well. We had uh, Tal Roglit and um, Dor Schmilovitz. They came over to the zone, of course. They really impressed me and everybody else. And they came over and did a an awesome job flying for SAB Heli Division, as as well did you know as as with some of the, a lot of the younger pilots. We had some really awesome uh, younger pilots coming through uh, in Heli Masters. And it's great it's great to see that sort of talent. Um, but don't forget, we've got, we got questions. If you want to ask questions, please go ahead. No problem at all. Just hit us up a, a message on, uh, on, on uh, the, the Google chat, and we'll discuss it. Not a problem. Uh, we're also going to talk about the news as well. We're gonna, we, we've got our uh, uh, a normal kind of uh, program of events here on the Rotor Show. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, just, just going back to types of blades, what blades do you guys use? Me, uh, SAB black lines on pretty much everything. Um, I do also like the Align, in the new Align 3D blades, the black and white stripe ones. I do really like them. They've just got a really nice feel to fly in there. My 450's got them. And when I had my Raptor before, that was running on 700s as well. Mm -hmm. Um Blades. I've had to go for rotor techs, really, just because of just what's available. They were the best of what was available, and I couldn't really afford radix because radix were just uber expensive. But no, generally, it is SAB black lines or the Align 3Ds, the new ones. Yeah, well, I've, been, I've been running the, five, the HD 520s on my X5, and they they they're nice. They're nice and accurate, and they auto well. Um, but they do seem to pull a little bit of power, a bit more power than other blades from what I've, from what I've been reading. Hmm. So uh, I have in on the model at the moment, which I haven't actually had a chance to get out and abuse properly yet, but uh, 
I've got a set of the uh, SAB black lines that I'm going to give a go. They're, they're about 10 or 15 grams lighter than the the the, uh, the lines. Uh, they're a bit narrower cord, but uh, but they're a 525, so they're a little, they're a little bit bigger. A um, little bit concerned about head, about blade, tail blade interaction might be a little bit close, possibly, but fingers crossed, should be okay. <laughs> what, what do you what do you use on your your tail rotors then, Kev? What do you, uh, you on your 600? What do you use? Same again? Yeah, just, just, just SABs, yeah. Just the stock SAB blades, yeah. See, it's see, not like, I, I, 500 for my my little 500. The not, um, not much choice is there. Uh, it's, so if you you, you want to be running kind of 85, 90s on the X5, and there, mm. there isn't really a lot around. So I'm running the Align um, uh, 90 mils at the moment. Just it just, it just seems to be a bit of a funny size, unfortunately. They don't seem to be um, that many around. It's a bit annoying. Mm, yeah, you you speak to um, speak to market uh, spin blades because you can. Uh, Mark does a you know great range. I mean, that's the only blades that I've ever really found that suits my style. You know, I mean, they're they're European made. They're all you know constructed, uh, manufactured, and tested, and R and D in Europe. And the best pilots in the world fly spin, so I'm you know kind of in good company. I know there are a lot of other blades around at the moment. I know these Zeal blades are kind of trying to make a bit of an impact, but I think they're sort of Thailand based or something. And well, we'll see. I'm sure some people will like them. Some some people may not, but uh, I just stick with what I uh, know and trust. So let's talk about the um, let's talk about the news then, Kev, please. Yes, um, obviously we haven't got a guest this month, so we can uh, expand the news ever so slightly. Um, not that we really have to truncate it much, but there's been quite a bit come out actually this last month or so. Um, now, as many people know, the line have brought out the L. Dominator, like you've got a 700 L Dominator now, it's just come out, and you've got the Line 450 L Dominator. And a few weeks ago now, we were just having a bit of chat down the field, thinking, well, how come a Line are now calling on Ls and Dominators and, and stuff like that? It's like, well, everything was DFC, and they sort of went in both feet with DFC. And we're thinking, well, I wonder if they're just trying to get away from DFC because obviously not a lot of people are flying them now. I mean, I know some some of the guys that are stalwart aligned have been putting KDE heads on and going back to the old FL heads and stuff. Now, Align, they've now released a mixing arm head. Um, what, what did you say there, sorry? Uh, they've released a mixing arm head, which is uh. going back towards the... Uh, Going back towards the old uh, FL style, I'll just put it on the screen for you there. there oh, that's a picture of it there. Um, basically, yeah, it's um, it just looks like it's the old EFL head. It looks like a bell, there's a bell hill of mixers and all that in there. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, it's gone back to a swash driver, stuff like that, and different um, anodizing. I mean, no doubt the line guys are screaming at me, telling me, oh, it's completely different and they've changed this. Well, it looks like an agile. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, from the outside, yeah, it, it just looks like it's gone back to the EFL head. Um, but what they're saying is everything stays the same as the DFC. Apart from the main shaft, they've got to put the old uh, EFL main shaft back in, so the DFC, DFC main shaft's no use. Everything else is the same. It's a conversion kit, so you get the um, uh, swash driver, you get the arms off the blade grips, uh, you get the head block, uh, a few other things like that. Um, price in America is coming out at 122 and a quick, quick mass. It works out about 70 quid something like that over here for the conversion. So if you've got the dom uh, 700L Dominator, it's going to cost you another 70 quid to put this oh. mixing arm head back on. I, mean, I asked Alan about this at uh, Helimasters, and I asked mm -hmm. him this specific question. You know, the, the new fly bias, uh, the new fly bias head, and we were referring to this, uh, compared to the DFC, and he said, I, I will never turn away from a DFC. He said, I've got no problems with it. I've never had a problem with it. Why should I change? Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, they do fly well. Don't get don't get me wrong. And from an aesthetic point of view, the DFC head is probably the neatest solution. It really is. Just so simple. It's there. Lack of parts. You can't fault it. I mean, one one of the guys at my club, he swears by his 700 yeah. DFC. And to be fair, he flies the absolute snot out of it. 
and it just it just flies, you know. It just does what it says on the tin. But yeah. this hobby is driven by fashions and trends and yeah. what's and what's latest, and everyone's sort of dropping the DFC heads. I mean, I know on my goblins, I'm running the HBS head, which is the mix their mixing arm head, and everyone. Got, as, as, oh God! As everyone knows, the goblins came out with a DFC head when when they were first introduced, and now they've gone on to mixing arm head, and everyone's sort of following suit. Every manufacturer's following every other manufacturer pretty much, and now we're going back to mixing arm heads, which technically it is the best solution uh, because yeah. there's, no, there's no in, there's no interactions. I mean, if you're going to be picky. I mean, really, really picky. You could say that when your blade grips are teetering with, with, with the blade movement in flight and everything, the DFC link could slightly put your blades out of phase, could put your swash plate out of phase just by the tilting of, of the DFC link. So say so you've got your, your, grip, your grip there, your blade going out that way, and your blade teeters. It's just going to move your DFC link just, just a little bit. I mean, it is fractions. You're probably couple of thousand, something like that. So technically, you could say it's going to put your phasing out. In okay. real life, it doesn't. In real life, it just it just works. It's, just, it's, just, the, it's just the... Um, from a purist mechanical kind of thing, the, the, the reason that there are ball lengths on there originally is to allow for some movement and some flex. Mm. And uh, without loading up the... Um, Putting loads on things that shouldn't be getting loads on them, and that's and that's the that's the thing really. It, I, that's why I don't personally like DSC. It's uh, it's just an abomination of of uh, of mechanical the laws of mechanics. It's just wrong. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, good, I, I'm glad to see it. I'm, it's good to see. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I think DFC is more form over function. To be honest, but you can't argue that it works. No, you, yeah, you, right. there's no denying it does work. And you, you, you know, yeah, it, it's, it is what if it I, is. If I was to be asked, I'd rather go for simplicity than complication. Yeah. And to me, the DFC, the DFC uh, is just, it, 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 it applies the physics and it does the job. I mean, you know, Again, it's all about trends. It's all about selling stuff, isn't it? So they've got to sell stuff, uh, yeah. and they, they've always been innovators. They've always come out with new, uh, you know, new ideas. Some have worked, some haven't worked. I mean, look at the, you know, the T Rex one hundred. You know what I mean? And that was a bit of a flop, wasn't it? But that was just preceded by the, you know, the MCPX, which kind of stole all the thunder, didn't it? You know, so they, they've had they've had a lot of wins, um, yeah. and I'm sure they're going to have a few, uh, you know, a few flops. Whether this will be one of them, I don't know. But I tell you what, yep. when Alan, when I saw Alan fly the the seven hundred uh, with the that um, uh, the speed uh, conversion on the you know the, the the boom cover and the it looked it looked really really nice and it flew very nice. It really yeah. did. Um, and so you've got to you know regardless of uh, you know what comes next with the line i think you know respect has to be given for their consistency their their durability uh, and they're just simple out of the box thrashability and i think that's ultimately what's kind of carved them their their position in the market right now but there are a lot of other really great helicopters aren't there and i say you know yeah. I, i'm evangelical about my uh, kds agile but for me you know, it's it it works for me. It's 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 perhaps not. It perhaps won't win the Masters. You know, it's not a Cowie X7 or a you know a sort of a sort of a, uh, a T Rex 700 Pro DFC HV V3. You know, it, but it, for me, it just it's just good. I like it uh, and it flies well. So you yeah, know, I think, I think these days <laughs> there really isn't because because they've taken the road ahead with flybarless because the road ahead isn't. Uh, as big uh, an effect on the, the way the model flies. Yeah, there's not that fly bar, and there's not the mixer ratio, and there's not the paddles and play. Those sort of things, they don't affect the, the, the way the model flies as much anymore. Now, typically, a model will fly like the fly barless unit and the blades that it's got on it. So it's, it's nowhere near as, as, as critical these days. You know, if you put a well-set-up model the way that the pilot likes to fly it hmm. um, in, into the hands of, say, Duncan, or, you know, you put, you put 
a, de- a good model, sorry, a, a well set up model with decent gear in it, the servos and stuff makes a bigger difference than anything else these days. Of course. And uh, with a well set up fly baller system and hand it to Duncan Bossian or the Bosso Brothers or Duncan Osborne or mm. yeah, any of the, the top end pilots and they will all fly the pants off it. Yeah. And they will all win competitions with the majority mm. of the models that are available now. We're very lucky now. You know, five, six, seven years ago, you know, there was the choice. You basically had a Raptor yeah. or a Raptor or a Skidoo. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. You know, that, what, are those, what are the that, Sentry ones? Do you remember the Sentry, oh God, Sentry don't, Hawk? No, don't. That's it, yeah. Don't yeah, see. Century Hawk. Yeah. Or if you were really poor, you could have an LEQ that fell apart at every opportunity. Uh, I'm talking pre LEQ here. I'm, I'm talking. Oh yeah, way before then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, if you if you flew if you flew reasonably well, you you had a Raptor 50. Um, or maybe if you were glum for punishment when you spanked sp- it in, you had a Skidoo. I had one of those. They were pretty fragile. And they wore gears out in no time. It was ridiculous. Um, but they flew really nicely. Um, until you decked it, then it never quite flew again. Um, so you basically, you had a Raptor with a bunch of quick UK bits on it. And, yeah. or, and that was pretty much it. That's the choice you had for a 50 size heli. You know, for, or for a heli that you would go and fly. You, you didn't have the size choices back then. The electric stuff wasn't... The bigger electric stuff wasn't working. You know, the TUX450 was about as big as the reasonable electrics worked. Mm. And you know, and that was that was the choice you had. Mm. So we're really, really lucky these days. I mean, if you look at the sort of the not ignoring the seven hundred size stuff, the big stuff that's you know, because that's that's still a lot of money to to lay out on motors and batteries and speed controllers. It's all pretty high end stuff to to get them going. But if you look at like the six hundred, the five hundreds, you know, the the T Rex five hundred, which isn't a five hundred, it's four hundred and something. Um, you look at that sort of size of stuff, and they all they all fly really well. Hmm. You know, you just stick a decent flyby system on it, stick a bunch of decent servos in it, and a reasonable battery, and a reasonable speed controller, and a reasonable motor, and they work. And a lot of the combo kits work really nicely as well. You see, I, I do I do like. I mean, I must be honest. TSH Gowies, you know, they they've been around a long time. They were in fact the first uh, heli manufacturer to bring out a 450 size heli, and they've come they've come on leaps and bounds. And of course, the Duncan and uh, you know Duncan Bossiani came from. He did great with the TSA Infusion, Nigel Brown's TSA. But as soon as he got his hands on the Gary, because Johnny Bossian was flying the uh, the the X7 before before Duncan, but as soon as Duncan started flying the X7. His, his 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 attrition rate, shall we say, kind of dropped off, and his his performance just went through the roof, uh, and his consistency went through the roof. And and seeing him fly the Gary X7, just seeing what he can do with that, and the same with CD Saccharin, you know, his little compact dude, and all the guys from Gary, the, the, the models have come on so much, and that's still a DFC, you know, I mean that he, Duncan Bossian, the world champion, mm-hmm. flies a DFC, you know, head, so. Can't be that bad, can it? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Do you know what I mean? So, right. and, and he flies spin blades as well. Did I say that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, now, uh, going on from what Aid was just saying then about there not being a, a bad kit on the market, which there isn't. There, I don't think there is a such thing as a bad helicopter anymore. Um, a line of releasing an, another kit as well. Um, it's going to be the 550L. 550, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... DFC at the minute, but no doubt that'll have the mix ahead um, coming out soon. I'll just uh, whop a picture up. There we go. Um, yep, yeah, still comes with DFC at the minute. It's going to be coming with a new G Pro Fire Barless unit, uh, brushless high voltage servos, Castle Talon EFC. Um, the frames have had a massive redesign, so they look quite a lot like the 600 and 700 now with the proper sliding and out battery tray. So from what what uh, Jeff has said, that that's to bring the centre of gravity more to the centre, because um, the old 550, the battery was out on the front, so now the centre of gravity is a lot lot better, more optimised. Um, but yeah, no, the, uh, again, a line, innovating, and um, 
it's going from strength to strength. It's one, in, one in of the biggest game, com- In yeah. this game, it's, 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 you know, you, it's, you either innovate or you evaporate. And, and it's there those... it is. There it is. There's his catchphrase. <laughs> you like that, do you? <laughs> yeah. well, you either on. innovate or you evaporate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you that on a team bike, Nick. <laughs> oh, um, the other really nice thing about the, for, for a line anyway, about the new head is that it's a 70 quid conversion. Yep. 70 quid. That's nice, I think. Not yeah. too bad. Not too yeah, bad. That's it. Very reasonable. I mean, again, a line, everything is reasonably priced. I mean, the 700 Dominator kit, I think it's a, it's a grand. It, it's ready to fly. Just, just throw in some batteries and a, and a receiver and you're ready to go. So, you know, I mean, if you're going to build a Goblin in 700, you, it's a kind of two grand. I think so, if, you know, before, I, I don't think I would want to be kind of like the, the first purchasers of this new G Pro. I, with, with the history that they have with electronics, mm. um, they, they, they have made some fairly large balls ups in the past. Such as what? The 3G. The 3G, the 3GX. What? Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait a second. The V-Bar came out first, followed closely by the 3G. Now, some oh, people had problems, but it's all about setup. If you don't know that the technology was so new, people immediately jumped on, oh, it's the technology's fault, not mine. Now, I, you know, I'm saying from personal experience, I never had a problem with my 3G unit, and I had mine one of the first, uh, you know, nobody I knew had a fly by system, and I had the 3G, the little brain on the side, and it was brilliant. Now, okay, compared to the Bavarian Demon 3SX, no comparison, but that was five years ago. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they made a cock of I think they were innovators. You know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, it's, it's a process, isn't it? You know, I think it's unfair for people to slag a line off because of, you know, the, their their evolution of fly barless systems. Because comparing the the, the the G Pro to the 3G, then yeah, it's it's miles apart. But personally, I just feel it's unfair. You know, kind of making making out that they drop loads of clangers with. I'm not saying they drop loads of clangers, but they have. I, you only have to read the forums to to go and have to see the problem, the valid problems that people have had. And that's fair. I think that's fair to say that they have. And Jeff admitted it on the last show. Do you go and go and watch the last show? And Jeff <laughs> admitted that they have had issues with them, and it has been a steep learning curve. For yeah, because them. it was new um, technology. So, and I, it's not. I, I would, what I'm trying to say is, I would. I don't think personally, me personally, I would not go out and go. Oh yeah, God. Yeah, off we go. Let's go and have a look at this. I'd, I'd let some other people go and try it first. If, yeah, if it's my own money. No, I, I see what you're saying, AJ. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, personally, I didn't have a 3GX, and I got it to fly half reasonable. Don't get me wrong. I, I had it at me 450. I, I took a lot of time with the setup, and I got it to fly half right, and it, it flew pretty well. Um, but let's not forget though that these fly barless units they're not actually made by the a line they're made by an out, outside supplier I mean I don't yeah, know but to line it, specifications remember yeah to line specifications but it's not actually made by a line it's made by an outside supplier for a line and you know it, there is going to be problems if you're having stuff outsourced there will be little problems in quality control Something will slip through someone's quality because it's not quite up to what your standards are. Stuff like that happens. But no, I think the G Pro. It, I think it's going to be worth a shot. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind getting an older one and, and trying one. And I, I'll give them a, a biased review. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll get old. I, I don't mind putting my hand in my pocket, buying the unit. Putting it on one of my helis, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a full review of it, and I'll give a, a honest account of what I what I find, and I don't mind sending the heli down to yourself, Nick, or sending it down to Aiden. Yeah, there's the heli. Put them settings in your transmitter and fly it, and, and tell me what you think. You know, it's, talking about the G Pro. Yeah, the G Pro now. Yeah, hmm. yeah. You know, it's 
I think it's going to be worth a try. You know, um, people are going to shy away from it because of, like Aid says, previous experiences. But give it a try. It might not be as bad as people fear. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people have tried it, and they said it flies really, really well. So, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. Give it a go. Well, I, th- I think I think a line a line have kind of got themselves into a position now where. You know they, they they don't need second. Ch- I know what you're saying, Kev. I do. I do know yeah. what you're saying. I think they've got so they've learned so much over the years that they've they wouldn't put something to market which would, you know, which which would need that much sort of um on in the field testing. All that's kind of been done. I mean, Alan was uh, you know Alan was talking to me. He was saying he spent you know three weeks over at Taiwan and then four weeks over there just and him and Kenny Co and all the other guys testing, 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 trying to find faults with the G Pro, trying to drive it into the ground so to speak to try and work it past its capabilities and you know it was a constant you know evolve evolution of um you know of, of the technology but the, the one they've released now they say you know it's very intuitive it's easy to work with blah 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 so personally you know i wish them all the best also talking about innovation as well what caught my eye as well a few weeks back is the uh, is the new embedded circuit frame on the the x3 and i believe mm-hmm. uh, that they're going to be uh, they're going to be rolling that out to sort of the x7 and some of the others uh, the x5 as well so that would, would that be something you'd be interested in uh, aid um I'm a big fan of the keep it simple, stupid um, philosophy, and especially when you're you're talking with servo connections and servo power connections, they that's relatively low voltage and relatively high current and quite um, transitional currents as well. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, um, the, the, the very the, the quite high peak, but it's very small, very short amount of time current. So uh, any resistance that's in the in the power line from the receiver or from the battery or from the uh, speed controller that so it goes through the receiver through the flybars and then it goes out to the to the servo. Any extra resistance that you've got in there is is going to be is going to be reducing the amount of voltage that the servo is seeing. So, so what, are, what are you saying? I don't like the extra connections. Every time you have a connector that <clears throat> Bits of wire generally don't fail. Actual solid bits of wire, unless you actually chafe them off, they don't, or cut through them, they don't fail. Thanks, Trace. Whereas the... <laughs> the wife's just barged into my room. <laughs> Whereas the... Um, with, that, with that bit of circuit board involved in there, you've got a connector that goes from the receiver to the bit of circuit board, with, onto a pin that is soldered... That is, you know, it's fixed into the frame, and then you've got the track that runs down the frame, and then you've got another solder connection and another connector that the servo plugs into. So you've effectively got at least one extra connection in there and two solder joints. So mm-hmm. it's it's just it's an extra point of failure, possible point of failure, which possible. Is, I, I, I can, I can hear, I can hear that. Yeah, I can hear that. But, but, but that. at the end of the day, it works fine. But yeah, you know, sure, it works fine. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, it's always, it always we always try and work around the kiss principle, don't we? I mean, that's what it's, you know, keep it short and simple. That's my philosophy. But if it, if if you can if you can simplify something, and make it better, then that's great. But if you if you try to make something s- Something that's complicated, more simple, yet you building potential failures or potential possible failures as a result, then that's not that's that's not progression, is it? No. I mean, you so can imagine a, a, a typical sort of fault um, scenario that you would see there is that you know that you'd, you'd crash it, and then the servo connections uh, in the on the frame would get a tweak. You might not necessarily notice it on the ground because. Uh, it, it's working fine as far as you can tell. It, you know, you wiggle the servos, all the servos work. But then you get it up in the air, the vi- added vibration on the on the joint, then it creates high resistance. Servo fails and it crashes. So it's it's just you know it's an extra thing to go wrong. 
and there's enough things on helicopters to go wrong as it is, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I concur with that one. Are we finished with the news, Kev? We got anything more no, you can no, talk about? We've got quite a bit more, yep. Yeah. We got more, yeah. we got more. All right, going back to what we were just saying about the G Pro and, and everything, um, Spectre uh, released an, a fresh one. Um, the AR7300 Beast X. And there we go. Um, essentially, from what I can tell, it's got a built in HV bus. It's not a regulator, guys. Don't get confused. This is not built in regulator to this fly wireless system. What it is, it allows you to plug your HV servos directly into your fly wireless unit and power the fly wireless unit direct to LiPo. And it'll basically it's a distribution board for your electrics. Comes with a remote switch, which if there's a problem with the switch, it'll default to on. Um, if you omit the switch, essentially you just unplug and plug plug your receiver battery in, and it just works. Um, works with DSMX and DSM2, just like the S7200. And uh, it's got the latest firmware in as well now, which I do believe includes a nitro governor um not a massive amount on it actually on spectrum's website um just a, a few little basic things i actually picked up more from uh, speaking to uh, a beast x sponsored guy and uh, that's pretty much where i got all, all most of this information from but yeah it, it's another one of those um Things that just works. It, it simplifies everything. Your receivers all in one. Your fly ballast is all in one. And now you've got your power distribution all in one. This, this is exactly what we're saying. About the KISS, isn't it? It's, it? This is what exactly what the Kiss principle is all about. Yeah. You, know, you you're taking out components out of the system and you're beefing up the power system in general. So that battery, the the connection from the battery is a, a larger gauge. Looking at the picture, it's a larger mm -hmm. gauge than the the standard one. Than the standard sort of survey wire that you would get on the speed controller. So that yeah, that's that's a good thing. I like that. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, well that yeah, that's it. Um, Synergy. Um, we were going to mention this anyway. Uh, if Matt was on, um, we we'll have a good chat to him about it. Um, obviously he's not on, so we can't. So we can only chew the fat between amongst ourselves. Um, they've released a speed conversion. For the Synergy E7 and E7 SE, and where's the button? There it is. There we go. That is the Synergy E7 Speed. It comes with this is the conversion kit now. Remember, a conversion kit to convert the E7 to a Speed helicopter comes with, comes with a canopy, canopy mounts, and aerodynamic skits. Pardon? Where's the rest? Yeah. Yep. Where is the rest of it? Matthew. Most of it's an X5, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, now, yeah. Is, is a aerodynamic canopy a speed heli conversion? I'm Discuss. Not sure. Well, it looks good. <laughs> it does look quite nice. It's got a bit of a, a TDR-esque look to it. The skids look a little bit like a... Uh, uh, do, put the picture back up again. I'll just put it back up for you there. There you go. Yeah. Um, they, they just look... I see very well. just, just little oh, stumpy bits of, street, um, uh, Little stumpy bits of carbon, to be fair. Again, is it speed? I mean, everybody was uh, everybody was uh, wanting to know from from Alan at Helimasters, you know, it, you know, where, let's see, do speed? Yeah, and, yeah, and it, it it didn't, you know, it wasn't, it was just a three D machine, look look like a speed, you know, is this going to be like Goblin speed? I mean, that's designed for the purpose. Has <laughs> this got the, you know, the go faster? You know the go faster legs just because it looks all right, or is it, or, or is it, uh, is is it just hot air? What, what do you think? I have a problem with speed in general because I geeked out a while back about this and sort of did some of the maths on it with, with Ash from Accuracy because obviously he's been involved in a lot of the aerodynamics uh, with with Accuracy and 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 how it all works. And the problem is is to get the high speed the high forward speed, 
you need to get a high head speed so you don't get retreating blade stall at high collective pitch. And, that, and that's what gives that distinctive nose up kind of wall kind of when you when you when you get it going too quick. Um, if you don't have head speed high enough, then it does it will pitch up on you because you can't get enough forward elevator to 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 keep the nose down and then that retreating blade stalls. So then what you do is you run at a higher head speed, which then gives you more lift on that retreating blade for the same angle attack and stops you getting in the retreating blade stall. The problem is then is that when you start getting up to the sort of the 175, 200 mile an hour mark, is that with a high head speed to stop the retreating blade stall, you then start getting the the tip speed of the forward going blade. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, okay, sorry. You, <laughs> you then get, I'm going to finish anyway, because it's, I find it interesting, and I'm sure other people will do as well. So, when you start getting forward, I'm just going to mute him, I can do that. Watch this. Silence. So, <sighs> right, so, when you start getting that, the head speed high enough to not have the retreating base stall, then get in a situation where the forward blade will then start getting into the tran the uh, transonic region to speed of sound, Nick. You know, you know that sort of when you do a whip, it makes that cracky noise. That's the speed of sound. Do you know that? I'll overlook your condescending tone if you take heed of the gravity of mine. <laughs> We've just got a question here from uh, Eric Valen Val uh, Valerinano. Uh, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Valley Renato, sorry. Uh, this is, uh, he said, DFC sucks. The project doesn't even make sense. Uh, he said, uh, it ignores completely all the forces that occur in rotor head speed whilst flying. Uh, I, I can't agree with you. I can't disagree with you. Everybody has their own uh, their own opinion on that. By the way, were you kind of talking about translational lift and flux capacity? No, I wasn't talking about translational lift at all, Nick. I was talking about transonic speeds. So anyway, so when you get into the transonic speed, what happens is you then get a heavy and sudden nose down pitch. So anyway, we've mooted in Kev, so let's crack on. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mute anyway, button. Too. I don't have a mute button. They don't. They don't get the. I don't. If they see two hundred mile an hour in the next two years, I shall be very, very impressed. I but think I think see the two hundred mile an hour mark. I think. We're going to have to see some pretty special blades, like we saw on the Lynx, the full-size uh, helicopter that did 248 or something like that mile an hour, 250 mm, yeah. mile an hour. To that get those sort of speeds, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see some pretty special rotor blades. Yeah, well, you can't. You can't really have burnt blades on a, on, a, on an RC helicopter, can you? Or maybe you can. M yeah, maybe. But it's, it's going to take some pretty big brains to uh, get all the technology and it, it's yeah, beyond, miles beyond where it is at the minute. The aerodynamics at this sort of scale are <laughs> incredibly scary. Yeah. Very, but I tell, very complicated. I'll tell you something, guys, and you, you saw it as well. I mean, when Marcel flew the Goblin Speed at the 3D Cup final round, Helibastus France, I'll tell you what, that was sensational. I mean, you know, again, go back to the technology, the, the British experimental rotor program. I mean, that started off in the 70s. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't see why that technology can't kind of drift into the RC market. But Marcel's uh, Goblin Speed, although it, it did disintegrate, but it was a rather silly maneuver that he pulled to do that. But I tell you what, if that wasn't close to 200 mile an hour, I'd be very surprised. No, no, I, I, I think it was pretty, it must have been pretty close, but I, like, like Aid says, I, 200 is going to be pushing the limits of what they're capable of at the minute. It's going to take mm. some pretty fancy engineering. Some very experienced thinkers have got to put a lot of input into it to get it there. I mean, this the, the new Henslite CDS is going in the Jan Henslite is going in the right direction with it. Also, I think maybe. I think Jan might be the, the man to do it, but not yet. Not yet. It's going to be a few years at least, I think. 
Well, we, you never know. You never know. There's yeah, enough. Well. There's enough. There's enough interest in the speed market now for R and D to be pumped <laughs> into it, and we'll see. We've got a message actually um, um, from from a, an interesting question from Dave Mead. Dave says, "Hi guys, a DX seven S transmitter has only idle, uh, only one idle, uh, only one idle switch. Can one of the other spare switches be programmed for idle too?" He said he loves the show. Uh, now, as far as I know, DX7 can't, but the DX7S, I don't know. Does anybody you guys know? You only have uh, one idle up, don't you, on the DX? It's, and it's when you get to DX8, you get the two, isn't it? I think I can't remember, to be honest. Uh, yeah, the DX7S only has one idle yeah. up function. And, and De- definitely, a friend of mine's got one. It's definitely only got one idle up. You, you can't, can't reprogram even, it now. No, you can't even program it to another switch. No. no. Dave, what are you trying to achieve with your uh, with the, the extra idle up? Are you just trying to run a different head, two different head speeds, or you know, what? If you give us some idea of what you're trying to get out of this, the second idle up, then maybe we might be able to find some sort of workaround for you. Hmm. Yeah, come back to us with that answer, and we'll uh, try and help you out. We also had another message from uh, Daniel Slatnik. Oh, by the way, th- thanks very much for your uh, your comments about Duncan and me. Uh, he said, "I love my um, I love my Facebook head." <laughs> I think that means fly bar, I said. Uh, feeling myself, feeling old school. He said he first started the hobby a couple of months ago or a month ago. Oh, right. Wow, he really is quite uh, uh, virginial and fresh. Daniel Slatnik, where are you from, Dan? Uh, thanks for checking out. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep the practicing. In fact, if you are starting out, you know, new in the hobby, probably having yourself a fly barred head is going to help you because it gives you that extra stability. You only have to use a normal sort of three axis gyro. Um, you don't have to get involved in all the technical fly barless programming and all that sort of malarkey. You can kind of keep it quite sort of old school and, and back to basics. So keep up the good work. Keep up the practicing. We'll, uh, we'll be interested to hear how you get on. So if anybody else wants to send us a message, uh, what time are we wrapping this up? We're going to do an hour and a half, guys. There's a few more things to talk about. We'll see how we are an hour and a half. We might go a bit further. Yeah, and if you carry on boring us, we might cut it short. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, now just just another quick one, eh, uh, before we uh, move off from the the Q and A's. Um, Jeff Orter's got one there. He says, "Kev, what night blades did you get?" He's just got himself a set of Radix Six Nineties. I ended up with Rototex, um, made by Funky in Taiwan, I do believe. Same people that make Edge and quite a lot of the other blades, I believe. A line are made by Funky as well. Um, but yeah, ended up with Rototex, so. They fly all right, actually, in the daytime. Um, what they fly like at night, I don't know. Um, hoping I'll get out tomorrow and fly it in the night at night time. Try and get a video for everyone and uh, see how it goes. Right, um, very final bit of the news. As everyone knows, last weekend was Helly Masters over at Venlo. Um, Duncan Bossion, he was the winner. He's now the world champion with a perfect 4,000 score. Da, da, da. Picture there for everybody. Duncan, um, Kyle Dahl came second, and Jamie Robertson came third. So let's. Uh, I mean, I think I can say for all of us here, massive congratulations to Duncan for winning. Thoroughly deserves. Definitely one of the best, if not the best pilot of the time. And obviously, win at Heli Masters, it's the premier event, and. He, he, he's proven his salt, so really, really well done to Duncan there. And the advanced class at the same event, um, the winner of the advanced class was Robin Hollighouse. Uh, I look Holly, at the name. Holly, Holly House. Holly House. Holly House. Uh, Holly House. I would imagine he's German with a name like that. Is it, would I be right, Nick? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, German. And Tal Roglic. As, as you were saying at the beginning of the show, Tal Roglic, one of the new guys to the scene. Um, only young, he's about 10 or something like that. Yeah. He's only a little, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Tal Roglic came second, flying for SAB, and third place was Sakharin Compton. Um, Compact Thailand. dude. Yeah. Compact dude. Compact dude, yeah. Another youngster on, on the scene, it, it, destined for good things, these two young lads. It, it, if they carry on flying like they're flying, they're going to. Uh, they're going to be world champions eventually. It really isn't. But yeah, that'll lead us on to um, Nick's um, adventures at Heli Masters. And he can tell us a little bit more about what went on behind the scenes, any little juicy gossip that he found out. And uh... Before we do that, I'm oh, going to go on. 
Right. Um, I wanted to show people this because oh, it doesn't. Oh crap! That's great, isn't it? Cuts off that a bit. Bit. I actually want to show. Oh well, don't worry about that then. That's Burt Blades. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'll find another one. Lynx. Uh, that was supposed to be a picture, a picture of the uh, Lynx blades, but it didn't work very well. Uh, yeah. They're a bit strange. Yeah, the ends are uh, sculpted for aerodynamics, and it's all beyond me anyway. I don't. They're I don't want to. They're called. They're called, they're called, they're called Burt blades. <laughs> they could, I, know, I know that, but that's about all I know. <laughs> I didn't. I, I wasn't aware of that. Why are they called Burt Blades? The British British European Experimental uh, pro- Program, isn't it? Yeah. They're, they're called Burt Blades because they they're designed uh, obviously for suit. B E R P, not B E. I, I, I thought you I thought you were giving a bit, a bit of a camera love there for a second. <laughs> no, but B B E R P. Google it. Burt Blades. Uh, okay. That uh, makes sense right. now. Yeah, uh, I might I might read up about it later on just to geek myself out, but I, it's, it's beyond me at the minute. But yeah, no, um, Nick, you were the commentator at Ellie Masters. Um, we all heard you on Duncan's uh, victory flight, baying for the blood of his E7. Tail slide, <laughs> tail slide, trying to get him to s- stick it in the deck. No, no, I wasn't trying to get him to stick it in the deck. If I wanted him to stick it, in the, if I wanted him to stick it in the deck, I would have told him to. But no, he was. <laughs> he, he actually, he actually. I, I tell you what, I said this to uh, to a few guys after. I was really, uh, really quite proud of Duncan in a way because, he, you know, he, everyone was expecting it, and to a degree, you know, it is almost expected for you to 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 um, to put it in on the victory flight. But he really controlled himself, and he didn't kind of. He, he didn't. He didn't bow to the pressure. Basically, he put on a fantastic show throughout the entire show. I mean, he had one crash during a demo, which wasn't his fault. Um, but apart from that, you know, his scores were impeccable throughout every single round. Is is um, the symmetry and the geometry of his flights, the the accuracy of his transitions, the 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 altitude of his maneuvers, the timing was just impeccable. And and, and when I when I read out the the results, when I was handing the result handed the results in the in the Comstead about half an hour before we did the uh, did the award ceremony, I was looking through the results and I was uh, and I saw obviously Duncan at the top, and I, I did have a bit of a warm fuzzy because a warm fuzzy inside because I knew how hard Duncan has worked. And as I said on you know on the on the microphone, whether people believe me, but this is the truth. I don't have favourites. I'm not paid to have favourites. Um, I, I have friends who are pilots, and I consider all of them, you know, good friends. And a lot of the pilots are young guys, and I've grown, uh, you know, I've known them for the, for the last few years, I guess now. And they're they're almost like I'm not saying sentimental, but like sort of my surrogate sons in a way. And, you know, it doesn't sound too sentimental, does it? But uh, you know, I respect and love them all. You know, I really do, and uh, I want them all to do. I want them all to be on the podium uh, because I know how much hard work they put in, and. Um, you know, Duncan especially has worked tremendously hard, uh, and of course he's like a professional football player, a, a golfer, a snooker player. You know, we only see the tip of the iceberg. We only see the performance. We don't see the practice. And I know Duncan's put on, you know, put in so many hours. I mean, you know, the likes of uh, Mirko Sassena. I mean, he he, he puts in fifteen hundred hours a year. I mean, that's what four, three and a half, four hours. Of practice a day, whether it's out, you know, real flying or sim. So the dedication and the commitment is uh, is so commendable, and, and much respect and love is going to be given to them. But you know, I was so disappointed, of course, from our UK boys, Stuart Mar, uh, um, Duncan um, uh, Osborne, and, and obviously you know, Stephen Simmons and 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 Stu Smith. I mean, Stu had two very unfortunate crashes. He was very creative with his flights, um, but he just got a, you know, the, the the ground moved, so to speak. And uh, he, he unfortunately crashed out. But you know, we, we, I, I've got a lot of respect for all of the pilots. I, I really have, and, and, and I love them all to bits. And I think they all—they've done the sport and the hobby, you know, proud. And and the reaction of when I did the the the, the call outs, you know, the presentation, um, I, I, I built it up, and I, I kind of did it a little bit like the X Factor. Uh, I wanted to try it like that, and it seemed to kind of work a little bit because built it up the built up the anticipation. And then when I did third place. And then when I said, and in second place, and whoever's name I said next, the winner will know who he was. Uh, and I left it about, it must have been about 10 or 15 seconds. And as soon as I shouted Kyle Dahl out, the French call, everybody just went bananas because they knew obviously then that Duncan had won it. And that's his first, you know, sort of major title. 
and and boy does it does he deserve it but again no, there, there was only there was only a hair's breadth between duncan and and uh and kyle i mean kyle darn i mean i think there was uh, i don't know if the maths off the top of my head but it was something like 12 or 15 points which was nothing you know when you're talking 4000 being the top point you know the top score so it was really really close call between those two guys um but yeah, very proud of Duncan, very proud of Kyle. Jamie Robertson did a fantastic flight. You know, one of his last but one flight was through the trees. Nobody else tried that apart from Kenny uh, Kenny Co, who crashed as well, which was really funny. I don't know if you saw that bit on the live stream. Um, talk, talk, talk about um, uh, um, uh, Jamie's flight first. He went through the trees and he came up and then he just clicked the top of the trees. And it came down, and it all, it all went it all went crazy after that. And then Kenny Co tried to go through, thought he'd crashed it, flicked throttle cold, turned around to the judges to say, I don't know what's happened. And then the helicopter flew off into the sky. And I was screaming, your helicopter, your helicopter, your helicopter. And he turned around, and by that time, all the head speed had drilled off. And he, he came out of a throttle hold, tried to bring it back. It spooled itself up into a spaghetti, and then it just came down, and, and uh, they found it. Well, a good half a mile away, in a in a in a cornfield, apparently with uh, insects the size of mice, and, uh, and and in this sort of this rivery kind of brook thing, and they managed to scoop it out. It was it was funny, but I mean, this tree, you know, this gap in this tree, if you proportionally, it was about that big in the distance. You know, it was so tiny. If they would have gone through, they would have been total heroes. But they went from hero. To zero, but anyway, yeah. it was all okay. good TV. It, it was our actually our very own Russ Cleaver that got it out of that um, irrigation ditch. Uh, there is a video on Facebook if people uh, search for it. Search for Russell Cleaver. Yeah, you'll find you'll find the video of our Russ up to his knees in in an irrigation ditch getting Nelly out for Kenny. Yes, <laughs> so, Russell, well, well, was, Russell. Yeah, it was quite funny yeah. actually. What happened to Duncan Osborne? Well, I was talking to Duncan after, and he and he said to me he, he went into the Masters with the wrong kind of attitude. He, he you know, he's he's always he always tries to make himself super pumped, although he doesn't come across that way outwardly. Um, but you see, he's a veteran now, and it's it's you know he he came into it knowing the competition was so stiff, so he had a bit of a a negative mental attitude because he you know he didn't prepare a great deal because he was kind of thinking, well, I'm I'm not going to do very well anyway against these guys. So I'm a bit disappointed for Duncan, really, I guess. But I suppose he's coming to the time in his career where he has won, you know, a, a lot of silverware, and nobody can take that away from 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 Duncan for sure. Um, I mean, Nick Maxwell, you know, he had, you know, I'm sure he's having a difficult conversation with himself right now as to his future in competitive flying because, you know, he he sees the young guys coming through who are super talented, super slick, and are not sort of bogged down with the bureaucracy or the, you know, kind of bit battle-weary of all the travelling and that, that these guys have done over the years. And I suppose it takes its toll, doesn't it? Um, you know, but, 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 but there is new blood coming through, and we need new blood. They respect and understand that. But if you don't keep up with them, you'll, you'll fall by the wayside, won't you? But luckily for Nick, he's got obviously the blades, got his own business, his own product line and his blades. And, you know, Duncan is... I mean, he's got his, his, his graduated now, so he's got his career. And, and once the careers start kicking in, um, the hobby kind of has to take a little bit of a back seat, I guess. Uh, unless, you know, you're fortunate enough to have a full-time job out of it. Um, but those jobs are few and far between, aren't they? So. Yeah. yeah. And, and the trouble is that, um, you know, having worked in, in, the, in the sport myself, it's, it's very, very easy to, to get completely burnt out with it. It's... Uh, it's amazing how much sort of even more you know you, you look at the club level stuff and what goes on at club level, and then if you you then in in a lot of ways sometimes when you get up to the in the sponsored uh, you know get you know, fully sponsored category there, there's a lot of rubbish to deal with and you know fair play to these guys for putting up with it but both from 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 sponsors you know rubbish to put up with from sponsors and from general flyers as well. It's exactly, not, easy, yeah. not easy being a sponsored pilot, and I think we need to give some of these guys a bit of slack because yeah. you know people. You know, I got pushed out of sport, you know, because I just got fed up with it. 
and you know people need to learn. You know, we are a small sport. You know, we've got BMFA is what fifty thousand members or something ridiculous, and I think something with some stupid value like eighty five percent of those are fixed wing flyers. Mm -hmm. So in the UK, there's very few people flying helicopters, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's. It's it's a very difficult thing to fly helicopters. It's a very difficult thing to fly consistently and to a consistently high standard and a standard which is consistently shifting. I mean, I, I was I was we we went out for dinner me, uh, myself and Mitch Morosas and um, uh, Nick Maxwell and, and Jamie Robertson. We were talking over a Burger King. <laughs> it's, it's 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 celebrity food. It's trash uh yeah so anyway so we're talking and, and they you know they were talking about you know their careers and 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 the things that people don't see you know the fans and they love the fans i love the, the supporters without them there would be nothing um but you know it takes its toll of these guys they're only still young you know compared to us old buggers um these these are really really quite young guys with a whole yeah, yeah, the whole lives ahead of them the old one around here nick sorry you're the only old one around here. We're still sub forty, so we're still young. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but with, with age comes wisdom. But wisdom, true wisdom, never ages. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so these guys, you know, they work very, very hard, and, and all, and all sort of respect to them. I mean, Bert's, Bert's kind of getting to the stage, I guess, now where he's, you know, he's happy doing his demos. He's not a competition pilot, and he, can, you know, he's the first to say that. But that's not what it's all about, is it? People like to be entertained. You know, Duncan has his characteristics. He's a, he's a character. He's a kind of a, a carefree, couldn't care less sort of. Um, firefly of a pilot, and people love that style, love his love his attitude and his his young take on things, um, and it, and it takes all sorts. It's a it's a mosaic of of different skills and abilities and talents and characters, uh, and that's what kind of makes it interesting for people looking, so to speak, from the outside in, and they see all these different characters, and that's what that's what makes it enigmatic. That's what draws people in and makes them want to be involved with it. And and and, and long may it continue as, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, you remember as well with the American guys, unlike us Europeans, they don't have that many opportunities to compete in their home country. I mean, in America, it's all fun fly. They don't have, apart from XFC, but there's no real competition. So when they come over to the likes of zone where it's like, ooh, you know, like pressure, 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 and helimasters, you know, sometimes, you know, they're, they're kind of a little bit behind the curve compared to the European guys who, who do do a lot of competitions. Yeah, but also, I mean, the, 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 big, the big problem we have over here, and what I found coming back to the sport as well, is that the number of clubs that there are, there are around that are able, uh, willing and able to grow the new blood are very, very few. If you don't live in the right place, yeah, um, then you, you know, you, you need those pe those experienced pilots around to to help to to help progress these people mm. and get them up to this. And um, it's nice to see DMHC bringing um, a couple of people up through the through the through the ranks. You know, obviously Matt and Richie were originally GMHC um, from there. You know, and and then there's um, oh god, uh, Jamie Mc. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, sorry, I, sorry, dude. I completely lost your name out of my head then for a second. If you listen, uh, Jamie McKenzie. Uh, he's a, he's, okay. another guy that, he's another guy that's coming up through the uh, through the ranks as well. Yeah. But if you don't live in the right place and you don't have a heli club nearby, then you are screwed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could, have, you, you could have all the talent in the world, and you will not progress through the sport. The way you go, so I think we're lo losing a lot of the top potential top pilots because there are so many fixed wing clubs floating around that just don't accept helicopters at all. Hmm. And I've got one, I've got two, I've got three clubs locally, and one of them is one of them's a heli club who is DMHC, right? And then we've got a, a, a mixed club, which are a good bunch of guys, it's electric only. But um, th there's not a lot of experience there. And then the other big local club is Wimborne Mac, and they I actually emailed them just out of interest to see if their uh, um, see if their attitude had changed, and I got a flat no 
basically. To, yeah, mm. to, put, to put it bluntly, and this is a club that this is a club that was in the BMFA rag, being all nicey nicey about how welcoming they are and how they're growing new bloods up through the sport, and yeah, they they encourage kids, but unless you fly a helicopter. Yeah, they don't. They don't. I, I, I must be honest. I'm, I'm unfortunately part of a club like that myself because geographically, it's the only one local enough for me that's practical, uh, and and they they're just they're just. The, the, most most of the guys there are, are, are fresh out of God's waiting room. You know what I mean? It's it's just. They, yeah. they they just have no they just have no respect for helicopters you know you know they they post stuff on the they do like a newsletter a club newsletter and I'm constantly having to go at them when the newsletter comes out and all oh, here are all the events for this year all the RC heli uh, RC events for this year and there's no heli events on there and I'm like wakey wakey you know we, we pay our mm. subscriptions as well you know RC helicopters you know why are you why are you being like this to us you know I fly fixed wing I fly helicopters why, why do you have this uh, anxiety against helicopter pilots it's just I think it's an age-old thing and I don't think it's particularly unique to the UK I think it's I think it's pretty much everywhere because it's the the old guys who don't like change who don't like you know but anyway we're getting very political about it now. but we just I, we I, as the I, younger I generation have got to try and help that move forward I just want to say I want to to go out to talk talk to the um, to the all the clubs out there at the moment, you know. Forget all the political rubbish. At the end of the day, you are a helicopter club, you are a, or a model flying club. Mm -hmm. Just remember that you're there to enjoy yourselves and fly stuff. Mm -hmm. So doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter who you are. You're there to enjoy yourself. It's supposed to be fun. Just remember that. Mm -hmm. right. Just, it's it's RC it's called sorry. it's RC it's RC apartheid isn't it that's what it is it's yeah. RC apartheid yeah now going on what Aid's saying there just out to our front I mean I was a member of a, my most local club it was just politics 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 oh. and like you say guys from God's waiting room just having arguments all the while <laughs> and I've now dropped onto this new club South Cheshire Heli Addicts I've got a bigger up because it's probably one of the best clubs I've ever been a part of. No politics. We just go now and we take the mick out of each other and we just fly helis. And there's a, there's a couple of really, really good helicopter pilots there. I mean, there's one young lad, I'm going to say his name now because I think he's destined for good things, Tom Owen. Now, you I've might know him. Yeah, you might know him from Fixed Wing. He's sponsored by OptiPower at the minute for Fixed Wing, but he's just got into helicopters. And... I actually did a vid he's actually done a, a video for the flight review of the Goblin 570 for me. And he flew the snot out of this helicopter. And he is really, really good. And I think he's destined for good things. He, he, he's very, very modest. He, he, he puts his um, talents down. He says, oh, I'm not that good. I'm not that good. He bloody is. He's really good. He is competition levels. But yeah, what? Look out for that name. Uh, there's going to be a Tom Owen coming through. But yeah, South Cheshire Rally Addicts. No politics. No bullshit. Just fun. It's brilliant. Mm. Love it. Well, we, 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 good luck. Good luck to Tom. And we, we, you know, it's all about new blood. It's getting these guys through and encouraging them. And it's a family of, you know, it's a family thing. The mums and dads have all got to get involved to to help push these mm. guys into into what is a truly you know, spectacular sport and hobby to get into. He takes them away from the computers, gets them out of the fresh air, gets them engineering skills, you know, motor skills and all that sort of stuff. But he develops a set of camaraderie skills with other pilots and people in the community, which can help them no end in their future lives. So I'm a big supporter. Uh, we've got to thank, say a big thank you to the... Uh, um, the, the, the girls as well at uh, at Heli Masters this year. Big up to, to to I can't mention them all by name. I haven't got time. But there was a, Rachel Plant and Simone Zuntra and uh, um, uh, Jenny Brandt and there was loads loads of girls. But they've got their own T-shirts now. The uh, girl um, um, the girls just did absolutely brilliantly. Put on a great demonstration. Everybody loved it. Everybody cheered. We had Mexican waves going on and we saw just building up to the big one as well, which is Urcha. Uh, which I, I'm, I'm really privileged and honoured that they've, uh, they've, they've, they've they're going to be flying me over to Muncie in Indiana to do the, the commentating at Urcha. You know, big thank you to Georges Van Gansen and uh, Howard Tan of of uh, of, of Gowie, uh, Mark from Spin Blades, 
uh, and uh, so Scorpion, Gary, and of course the guys at Mercado, and uh, and, and the, the 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 board at Urcher as well for, uh, for 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 inviting me over as well. So really, really looking forward to that. It's going to be a super event from the fifth through to the the tenth of August. But we've got air, of course, this weekend. So please, mm -hmm. whatever you do, if you're watching us now and and you're not a bit undecided. Uh, the weather forecast apparently has changed. I checked a couple of days ago, and it was a bit mixed, but uh, it looks like it's going to be really, really good. So get out to the White Horse. It's a fun fly as well, but the main event is air RC helicopter competition. So, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. We've got some fantastic pilots, homegrown talent, uh, and we've got some really good, really fun things and new things this year at air. So, yeah, this, this weekend. Sorry, Nick. A couple of things worth uh, mentioning, which I haven't forgot to mention about air, is that... If you're planning on turning up to the fly-in, um, make sure you either have an A or a B, or you have someone willing to uh, hmm. stand next to you. Now, if you turn up on your own and you're struggling, then uh, I've got a B, so I can stand next to you if you really want. Um, Nick, Kev, can you? Oh no, Nick, you won't be available, will you? You'll be t you'll be nattering. Uh, yep. Kev, I'll, you, be, uh, I'll be available for spotting if, yep. if need. Yep. Yeah, don't be afraid to turn up. It's a fly-in, it's a good laugh, it's designed to be a social event that you can come and fly at. Don't think that you're not good enough or anything like that. Turn up and fly, it's about having fun. And the other thing I was going to say is, bring a glider with you. I love gliding. If you've got a slope saw, bring it with you, because if it is blowing an absolute hooli, about three minutes up the road, there is a northerly straight westerly uh, with, with, with dynamic soaring on it as well, if it's northerly, which is quite cool, quite good fun. And there is, um, about half an hour drive away, there is every other wind direction other than southeast available. So, you know, if, if you do, don't be afraid. Don't, you know, bring a glider anyway, even if it's nice, bring a glider, because it may turn out to be a bit of a glider day, just, you know, if it gets blown out or whatever. I'd love, to, I'd love to have a go. I'd love to fly my gl I love gliders. Love, love them. Just before we wrap, guys, we've just got a few questions that we need. Well, a few uh -huh. comments that people have been kind enough to uh, to write in. So it's, it's only right we give them a quick mention. Uh, uh, Dave Mead said, that, yes, aid for second and higher head speed. Uh, presumably that's, I don't know what he really means oh, by that. That geeky stuff, which is really interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, Giz, Gizmo, Gizmotron 1. Hi, guys. I have the 3GX on my 600 Pro, and it flies very well. Never had a problem with it. No glitches, no swash tilts, no tail issues. Never changed it. But do use V-Bar on all other helis, which which is just more precise. As it would be, it's, you know, it's you know, moved on. Yeah, um, so... so Daniel Slatsnick said, I saw Connor Sloan flying the 700 this weekend at the uh, 2014 Milton Keen Heli Flying, of course, with Alan, uh, Tim Proctor, and all those guys. And um, they came up to that one. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it myself, uh, but I would have loved to. Uh, so he had, a, he had a great time there. Great attitude from the people. Everyone was friendly and awesome. So that's great. Um, congratulations to Connor uh, for uh, 16th in the, uh, in the advanced class as well at uh, yes. Heli so That's a pretty yes. solid result. I mean, you'd. you'd you're pretty new, and uh, looking at the scores, uh, you got eight. Oh, well, at all, really? Got, yeah, I mean, the, you're slightly low on the on the on the third flight on the third round, but the uh, very solid score for the second round. Well done, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what the hell was that? Oh, there's a mo moped going past my window. <laughs> <laughs> that's a moped. That's, 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 Sounds, sounds like a jumbo jet. Um, yeah, Heli Harry's um, Harry Mark, oh, Mark Driscoll said, uh, what do you think about the FAA rules on flying for sponsors and money? Well, that's an emotive subject. It's Nothing's been set in stone for that yet, so maybe we'll pick that subject up on a later I've show. I've got a bite-sized plan for that, but I need to do a bit, bit more research, so I'm, I'm probably going to be doing a bite-size on that subject. <laughs> Daniel Slatnik said uh, about Helimasters, I said Alan Sabo Jr. will be the number one for me. I, I, I have always respected and loved Alan Sabo. Uh, there are new pilots out there which I think have got the edge on Alan now, but he was certainly a trailblazer in the early days. So, yeah, um, so Jose Albino, uh, hey, or whatever that means, I've no idea. 
So yeah, we've got as Harry said, there'll be plenty of B uh, B B pilots at the the events are there this weekend. So, you know, if you do want to come up, don't be afraid. Make sure you bring your heli up. It doesn't matter your standards. You're not going to be compared against anybody else. It's just about having a laugh and having fun. Yeah. So yeah, we'll all be there. Um, I'll be there as well. You know, Kev and Aid will be there over the weekend. We'll have a great time. It'll be awesome fun. And uh, and, and yeah, so I think that's pretty much wrapped it up, I suppose, isn't it, guys? Oh, have you got anything? One last question from Daniel as well. He's been very active on the Q and A. Yes, yeah, he has. I'm not has to give him a job. <laughs> he said, "Is it worth a switch from Phoenix to Accuracy? My T Rex two fifty with a fly bar is not supported. I believe that it won't be too long until there is the T Rex of a similar sort of size or a model of a similar sort of size that will be supported. However, the the if you fly a slightly bigger model on Accuracy, it will still be more accurate." than Phoenix will be, in my personal opinion. Mm. You just need to tune the flybar settings or the flybarless settings to however you personally like your model to fly. But, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's, there's going to be new ones coming on board. Have we, have we heard about um, when, when the release for the Agile 7.2 is going to be on accuracy? Is that... there was, uh, they released 3D model uh, images of it relatively recently, that. but I don't I know exactly that. when it's going to be released. Hmm. Yeah, it, but... it, it'll come. Just, you know, yep. you know, they're they're uh, they're doing. They're, I mean, there's six guys working on it. They are working really hard mm. all the time. I know Ash doesn't didn't just look tired at Heli Masters. He has looked tired for the last two years, as far as I'm aware. Um, he certainly looks tired whenever I see him. So, you know, they are working really, really hard to push this simulator forward even more than it already is. Yeah. And it's already a long way ahead of the competition, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I saw a lot of people coming away from that tent, um, you know, in between the show uh, and, and during my break and in the, the when it rained and stuff. I, I went purposely over there to have a look, uh, and, and the, the crowds gathered around the accuracy booth, and uh, you know, the faces are, and the reactions from people. It said to me that you know everything that we've been saying and everything, all the the, the blurbs and the the promo stuff that's been put out there is is all kind of coming true. So I, I'm I'm pleased that everybody is enjoying it so far. So yeah, really. If anybody has got a glider, by the way, I I can fly mode two and mode. I'm a mode one pilot, but I can fly mode two as well on uh, fixed wing. So if anybody wants to bring a glider along and the weather's you know not that good, and if we get time, me and Mark Troutman would love to have a fly of a glider. So if you could help us out if with that, that'd be really, 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 really nicely and promise to be a good boy. I might let you fly my gulp. It looks like a shed, but it goes like steam. Oh, uh, was it was it slope or is it uh, thermal? It's slope. Ah, oh, brilliant. It's uh, and I, I think I've still got the lead for it as well. So if it's still uh, if it's blowing thirty plus, which it won't be, but if it's blowing thirty plus, we just load it up for the lead. It will do eighty, ninety, hundred mile an hour quite happily. Oh, I love gliding, love it to bits. Um, so Nick, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great weekend. Oh, sorry, Nick. Is there any fee for visitors at air? I don't know. You don't know. You don't know if it's. Uh, I, 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 think, I think it has to be, doesn't it? I think it will be free for spectators. Oh, for, for spectators, yeah, it'll be free for spectators. Obviously, there's a charge if you want to if you want to camp and all that sort of stuff. But it's all it's all on the website as well. If you if you go to uh, if you go to uh, www.air-competition.com, um, you know, then you'll find out all the information you can on there. Or if you want to, if you're on Facebook, uh, you can you can message uh, Richie uh, Richie Clark or Massey Lodge. Uh, they're the organisers, of course, of air, and they'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. So, guys, I think that's a wrap. I think we're going to kind of call it a day yeah. now because uh, we're over time again. So we don't want to get into the, uh, the the realms of our American friends uh, running on and on and on. God bless them. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to kind of <laughs> call it a day now. This is sorry for uh, sorry the fact we didn't have a guest uh, with us on the show tonight, but obviously you understand why. Um, but Yes, the way it is. So we'll see you back next time on another show very shortly with more special guests. Uh, this is where we're going to get on uh, Trevor Wallinger, I believe. Trevor Wallinger's talking about coming online from uh, from Midland Helicopters, of course. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have the Midland guys on the show very, very shortly. So we'll keep you updated as and when. So, yeah, so this is uh, Nick Johnson and uh, Kev Davis and A. Chapman Law. This is Rotors, the RC Helicopter Show. We'll see you as Air the Weekend or Urcher, wherever if you're in the States. We'll hope, I'll hopefully see you there 5th through the 10th of uh, August. So, yes, thanks for watching. We'll see you very soon. Take care. Good night.
Good night, guys. Thank you very much. See ya.